My name is Consuelo de Moraes. I'm a professor at ETH Zurich and I study biocommunication, which pretty much means how different organisms interact, how the sensory, uh, what are the sensory interactions between different organisms and there can be insects and plants, plants and plants, insects and insects, or even pathogens in humans. So I think one thing that's interesting about uh, plants and is that you have all these interactions, this arms race really that's happening. So plants are being attacked and, and the insects counterattack. And but one fascinating interaction is that plants, when they're being eaten by caterpillars, uh, what happens is the caterpillar saliva actually induces the plants to perceive somebody's eating me. But since the plants cannot directly remove that caterpillar, they send a signal, right? So they produce the smell, like if you want to think it's a perfume, and that perfume attracts the natural enemies of the caterpillars. And those natural enemies can be predatory insects, but also can be this very fascinating group of wasps. They call parasitoid wasps. And what they do is, once they come in, they have they inject the eggs inside, so they put the ovipositor inside the caterpillar, lay the eggs inside. That egg will emerge inside the caterpillar, eat the caterpillar from the inside out, and then once they're ready to emerge, and they keep the caterpillar alive, just kind of an incubator, and then once they're ready to emerge, they will make a little hole and they will pop out and then you have a little wasp instead of having a butterfly or, or a moth. So it's a very fascinating way, but this is the way the system works. And, and what we discovered that actually those signals are extremely specific. So if you have one species that's feeding on the plants, the plants send one signal. But if you have a different species feeding on the plant, they send a different set of signals. And that is wonderful, not only because you know, you produce a very reliable signal, but also if you think in the future, if you want to determine if plants are being attacked, you can use the signals that the plants are produced to know what's in there and what's being attacked. So if you have things that are feeding on the roots, you can use that to actually develop a much more sustainable ways to do agriculture. So another interesting aspect of biocommunication, it's how different pathogens can manipulate the host so they can be transmitted. So I have been doing this work with my colleague Mark Masker and what we have been able to show is that actually when you have a parasite, that parasite will change your odor or your smell in a way that you become much more attractive to the, the, those vectors that will transmit the disease. And the fascinating thing about this is that actually happens when the parasite is ready to be transmitted. So your smell is changing, but once you're ready to transmit the parasite, you become this very attractive individual. So I think that's very interesting. The other thing that this is relevant for is that that allows us to determine which compounds, which individual compounds, or which, what is the smell that you're producing, and we can maybe develop biomarkers that will allow us to do diagnostics of the disease in a much simpler way and maybe in a much more precise way than we're doing right now. And that's very important because malaria, one of the issues why it has been so hard to eradicate is because we have all these people that are carrying the disease but are not showing symptoms. So that will allow us to screen in a very simple way and really address those people, those, the, the sources of the disease, and that will allow us to uh, really deal with a disease important as the